Today on Doodle Bud, I'll be doing something that I think is a first ever for the world of fountain pens. Pens come in all different sizes and shapes and colors and materials and filling systems, but there's one area that I don't think has been done yet. The part of the pen I'll be talking about today where you might bear witness to the first ever is the nib. We're all familiar with steel nibs and gold nibs and hooded nibs and flex nibs. And sometimes it might be tipped or untipped and retractable too. Then there's inlaid and painted. But one thing I have not seen is a nib that gets anodized. And it just so happens I am a guy who likes to anodize stuff, especially when it's titanium. And there just so happens to be a nib that you can get that's made out of titanium. So I've been playing around with my titanium pens. This is my Enso Italia in titanium. And just for comparison, this is my Enso Pocket Pen, the Pocket Puma in titanium. This is how this pen originally looked when I got it. I had some fun anodizing titanium. It's a really cool material. It's kind of my favorite metal for a fountain pen. And I did a version where you use some electricity and, and a dielectric to put a thin little uh, oxide layer. That's essentially what's happening with that titanium on there. It looked cool, but then I decided to step it up a notch. And so I got a cheap titanium pen for that purpose and played around with a process where you heat the titanium up with a torch, you anodize it that way, but then you quench it in an acid. And that acid has to have chlorine in it because that's how titanium is mined actually they take the titanium ore they mix it with a gas a chlorine based gas to get rid of other materials and it's a huge long process to make titanium it's, that's why it's so expensive it's a very involved process to mine titanium and to convert it into a useful material useful alloy so uh, but there's a reaction that goes in you actually turn the titanium ore into a gas but then they bring it back down into a solid so if you exploit that process you can play around with that and have some cool finishes on your pen. So this is a shiny version I did. This is a dull version I did. And so I thought that would be really cool. I'm very happy with how this pen is looking. But the only part missing is that same effect on the nib. If I could carry that pattern down, that would be pretty cool. So I figured why not bring you along in my little experiment to see if this works. I'm going to do a first rendition, which is going to be the safe way. And then I'm going to do another way, which is kind of the safety not guaranteed way to work, which is a great movie, by the way, safety not guaranteed if you haven't seen that. So follow along. I'm going to take this nib off and I'm going to show you the safe, easy way to anodize it, make it look cool, give it a cool color. And then I'm going to be hitting this with flame and acid to see if it can kind of matchy matchy with this rest of the pen here. So I wanted to take a look at the nib here before I get anodizing, just to have a better understanding, especially of the surface finish. So I got out the microscope and went in nice and close. So you can see there, this is, it's a bit of like a matte finish. That comes from what they would essentially call a stone wash finish. There's an abrasive material that's washed in with the nib. But then I looked at the top, I went around the nib, saw the tip, and I saw some coloration. So I had to get in close and realize, Wait a second, this has actually already been anodized a bit. There's a little bit of an oxide layer that's left on the nib when the tipping material is applied. It's welded on, it heats up, and when you heat up titanium above a certain temperature, it reacts and you get a little oxide layer, hence the uh, colorization that you can see there right at the very tippy tip tip of the nib. So I guess I've sort of not the first person to do this because a little bit's already happening on the nib as it is already when they put the tip and material on there. But to do the whole nib, I'm going to go through and get this started. So that was really interesting. I might have to polish this a little bit first to get the brightness that I want. I'm going to have to mess around and just see how this goes. And you know, at looking at this nib and the surface finish, this actually now explains a question I had in my mind. So this is a fine nib. And it's titanium, but man, this thing's really, really wet. I check the spacing here on the tine, on the gap there, and it's right where it should be. It's not overly wide to make it extra wet. But because the surface finish is the way it is, it's more, there's more surface area, there's more surface energy. And that's going to exploit the capillary action that we have with the ink and increase ink flow, hence make this nib more wet. 
So one thing with titanium, when you anodize it, what's happening is you're getting a special little layer of titanium oxide on here. And it has a unique property that light is coming through, it hits the surface, but it goes through that oxide layer, then reflects off, and dependent on the thickness of that layer, it essentially phase shifts the light coming out, changing its color. Now, since the light is bouncing off the surface on the titanium and then coming through, the surface finish of the titanium underneath the oxide layer changes it a little bit. So you can highly polish that titanium and now it's a super shiny layer that's getting reflected off. You can have more of a satin or matte finish to it as well. If you even get rougher, it's not as vibrant. So that got me thinking the stone wash finish here that's on the nib, uh, that will impact the outcome on the titanium oxide layer and what we see. So what I'm gonna do is I can kind of do two and one here. I'll leave the outside the same and I'm going to polish the underneath side here of the nib here as well. Actually, what this might do is reduce the flow uh, by doing that too. So I'm just, I got a little a few different uh, paste polishes I can use. This is like a diamond one, super fine paste. I'm just going to use this one. This is a paste one. This is like a chromium oxide, similar to something you would use on a buffing wheel to, uh, to buff out steel and other metals. So now you can see a difference. That's a little bit more shiny, a little more shined up than the standard matte finish that you get from the stone wash. So when you anodize, I'm going to be able to see the underside or the top side to see which one's showing off the anodize a little bit better. I degreased the nib, cleaned it up. I have my anodize set up here with the batteries. Let's see how this goes. So I'm running into a bit of a problem. That's simply because I lost my titanium wire since the last time I did this video on anodizing using batteries in this little home setup. So I have some other wire and as I suspected, the anodizing isn't going as well. We can see a little bit of coloration down here, uh, but it's coming in very light. It should have easily changed color by now because this is such a small object. So I will see how it goes, if I can get some more color to it. If not, it's just gonna be hitting it with a blowtorch and some acid. So we have a very, very mild anodize going on here with the method I got going on. A little bit nicer on the back, a little more vibrant. That's where we got polished. I'm gonna give it one more try. I'm gonna prep the surface by dipping it in some hydrofluoric acid to see if that is gonna help with this version. So I'm just going straight directly the alligator clip on there and you can see the anodizing is happening much quicker. So I'll play around just to get some cool colors, but I think ultimately I'm gonna to have to hit this with a torch. Actually, the real problem could just be my batteries. Uh, I, th I thought it was kind of fishy because then I just hooked the lead directly onto the nib. So it's just titanium going straight in there, which would be the same as using titanium wire. And I'd have like 90 volts going in. It would have a big voltage drop, which is expected, but it couldn't climb back up. I'd max out at about 30 some odd volts, which is sort of the colorization I was getting on the nib. So I think it's actually just my power supply is the issue. So I'm gonna clean off the anodize that's on there, prepare the nib. We're gonna hit it with a torch and also dip it in some acid to see if we can make it match the pen. I have the nib all ready to go now. It was cleaned off and we're gonna get out the torch. So you have to clean it with hydrofluoric acid to get the original anodize off first. And I figured while I'm at it, I might as well do the other pen. So we're gonna do the nib and the pen. To do the nib, I'm going to use this little tiny torch. We're gonna to call them Tiny the Torch. And in order to do the pen, something a little bit bigger, we're gonna use Terry the Torch. So let's get everything ready and get torching. So using the torch on a nib is a little more delicate just because it's so much smaller and thinner. It's very easy to heat up. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure this out. This is my first time ever trying to do this, but I'm just watching the temperature which you can is indicative by the color that the nib turns. I'm getting it pretty close and I figure let's just dunk it, see how it looks, and you know what? Not too bad. So now it's just the same process. I use a larger torch because I'm using larger parts. So I start off with the section. I have a little rotating rod that I use on my drill to try to evenly heat the part. You can quench it into there. All right, then I go into the next part, same thing. You rinse it in the water after you quench it. So now I got the main body of the pen. Just doing the same process, trying to keep an eye on the color to see if it's the desired temperature I want. 
I get it close to where I think I am at. Give it a quench there. There you go. Dunk it again in the water, clear it off. Make sure to wear uh, protection when you're doing this either outside in a ventilated area. I have a respirator on when I'm doing this and I have some airflow going on too because you don't want to breathe that gas. So be very careful when you're doing this process as well. Here we go, I've got the main body. I want to change the color just to make it a little bit different so I got a little bit hotter on here. Quench it as well, same thing. You can see that gas coming off so be very, very, very careful with this. Rinse it off. Got all the parts done and let's see what we're dealing with. Okay folks, so here's the end result of the anodization on the nib and we dunk it into that acid that has chlorine in it to take advantage of how it reacts at certain temperatures. And we have that same cool pattern on the nib as we did on the pen. And I figured while we're at it, let's do the rest of the pen here as well. So you can see the surface finish gives a different look. So this was a much shinier finish. I prepared this one as more of a matte finish prior to anodizing. So you can see just a different uh, contrast, different reflection on the surface there as well. This one's a little more matte, as I said, and then uh, let's grab a piece here. You can see same effect, but shiny and glossy. Let's put it all together and see how everything looks all as one unit, which is pretty cool. And then I'm just curious to see how it is as far as wetness, if that has been reduced now. Just a few close-ups before I put the pen back together. You can see those Gorgeous. Sometimes they call this a lightning anodize on here. As you can see, those streaks that come up. Let's look at some other parts. This is the main body of the pen. Such a short pen and such a bad focus. There we go. So uh, you got different colors, different patterns, depending on the temperature that you anodize it to and also that you quench it at as well. And a uh, little bit of a different effect here on the main cap as well. So when you dunk it, it actually uh, does a bit of a color shift, phase shift too in the colors here as well. So I'll put it back together with a nib and then we'll put it on to the other pin. This is the Pocket Puma. We'll put it onto the Italia too, just so you can compare. So here we are on the Pocket Pen all together now with this gorgeous finish. You take the cap off. And now you have a nib to sort of match it as well. Let's post the pen. And there you have it, a fully anodized pen from tip to tail, even including the nib. Let's chuck this back onto the Italia. So here we are with the Italia all back together, which originally I bought plain titanium with a titanium nib. And then now here we are here. So I think that looks pretty cool. It continues the same pattern along. This matches better because when I did this body it was more of a matte finish for the surface prep versus super shiny like the other one so it kind of just matches a little bit let's get some of the ink off there i can't tell if that's ink nope that's just mostly the <laughs> the coloring that's on there so i think that looks pretty sharp on there on that pen you know you got the anodized that just goes right down to the very nib full anodized titanium pen. So one last thing I'm curious to check is the wetness. I did a review on this paper the other day from Great Fountain of Italy, and I used the same pen, same nib, same ink to see how this would do. Let's see how we're writing now. If it's any more or any less, less wet, you know what? It seems like it's about the same, honestly. It's still super, super, super juicy. Yep, I would say it's the same, so I don't think it's reduced the ink flow, contrary to my original thought. So there we go. I think that could have possibly been a first ever anodized, titanium anodized, especially the Entropic style where you quench it in uh, acid on a fountain pen nib. So let me know your thoughts on that. I think the result is pretty cool. Also on the pocket Puma there as well, as you can see, we have that real glossy finish. There's actually a lot of reflection going on. It's tough to get a picture of it. But all in all, I think that was uh, a fun experiment to do nonetheless. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Would love to hear from you in the comments. Some thumbs ups are appreciated. And subscribe if you haven't already. Come on, do me a favor. Catch ya next time.